There are many ways that ray casting can be performed. You've got snow casting, armor stand casting, and offset casting. But which method is the best? And how can you get the most out of each? Before we take a look at the actual mechanics, let's have a brief history lesson. During the Progressive Era, monopolies were abundant in the United States. Their leaders were always trying to find ways to save and earn more money. That's where Taylorism comes into play. Taylorism, created by Frederick Taylor, is the idea of using science to optimize economic efficiency. You can see why the monopolies would like such an idea, because they would save tons of money. So let's use Taylorism to influence our choice. So let's look at a brief overview of each of the methods. The first method is snowcasting. Snowcasting is the method I used back in 1.12 and even 1.11 in Space Aces. The general idea is that you throw a snowball and it runs execute commands relative to it. The second method is armor stand casting. This method uses the new 1.13 execute facing and also uses the caret position syntax. When the player uses a caret on a stick, it is tracked by a scoreboard and runs a function. Functions are almost essential for armor stand casting. This function summons an armor stand relative to the player, then teleports the armor stand in the direction it is facing. Each time it teleports, it also runs commands to damage entities and validate its position. The third method is offset casting. Offset casting is similar to armor stand casting, but doesn't actually use an armor stand. It uses relative positioning within relative positioning. Next, we're going to look at how I created and set up each of these methods. Snow casting is probably the easiest to set up, mostly because it abuses an already in-game mechanic. It takes very few commands because of this, but suffers from great inaccuracy and little customization. The problem arises because the snowball moves faster than 20 blocks per second, the fastest possible clock in Minecraft. Therefore you can't use a radius of 0.5 because there is a chance that you will skip an iteration. If you are only using snowcasting on non-player entities, there is an option to make the system a whole lot more accurate. Rather than immediately running the damage on the entity, you can tag it with a check. This check looks at the entity's damage cooldown, also known as the hurt time tag, used as a delay between incoming attacks. If a snowball hits the entity, it sets its delay to 10 ticks, or half a second. Therefore, you can check when a snowball hits an entity and run whatever command you want then. Another problem arises when you want very long distance shots. Snowballs with the no gravity tag, for some reason, lose velocity over time, and eventually even stop. Now both armor stand casting and offset casting are much more complicated. So the first problem you run to is the positioning of the projectile. You must teleport the armor stand up to make it shoot at your crosshairs. I found 1.6 blocks seems to be the best. In the second iteration, I implemented this and also reduced the amount of movement each recursion takes to only 1 16th of a block rather than a full block. This is for later to improve accuracies. But you may notice this huge group of particles, so let's fix that. I decided to have a scoreboard counter that goes up to 16 and then resets. When it reaches 16, it displays a particle and checks if there are any nearby players. The reason it does this check is so that if it gets too far away, it doesn't lag the game by going hundreds of blocks. Now that that is implemented, let's look at how I implemented precise hitboxes. I've only implemented the creeper's hitbox, but in theory any entity could have a super precise hitbox, even more precise than the one it already has. The first thing I looked at was the actual size of the creeper. The pixels in its skin are very close, if not exactly the same size of a pixel on a block, which means each pixel is 1 16th of a block. 
So I found that the creeper's general size is 12 by 8 by 26 pixels. You might next think that we should use box coordinates to test for the creeper. Unfortunately, I tried using box coordinates, but their minimum size is set to one full block, even if dx, dy, and dz all equal zero, which I believe should be unintended behavior. We want to be more precise than that, so it looks like we'll have to use radiuses. So now you can construct a hitbox of circles, which would really be a hit sphere. I decided just to use three spheres. I wrote a little JavaScript program that generates the perfect size radius given the box you want it to cover. Essentially, it just does the three-dimensional distance formula automatically. I use this to generate three spheres for me. So now that we have our three perfect spheres for the creeper's body, let's put them together. This part is quite interesting because of the way Minecraft runs commands. When it runs distance checks, like in a radius command, it shrinks the entity's position to a single point arranged in 3D space. We can use that to our advantage. So relative to the armor stand, we check if we are in the creeper's feet, torso, or head. Because the single shrink point is at the creeper's feet, we have to arrange the three hit spheres upside down. If you look at the projectile's path, you can see that if the raycast is heading towards the creeper's head, the upside down hit sphere finds the creeper's single point of interest. Boy, that's complicated. While we're at it, let's make the head hit sphere do double damage just for fun. You can see just how precise that shot can be. There's one thing left to do, and it can cause just as big of a headache non full blocks. So far, we have just killed the raycast once it reaches a block or is more than 100 blocks away from any player. The problem arises when we deal with slabs, stairs, rails, plants, and many other things. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to skip a lot of these commands, so you are forced to make a set of commands for each different hitbox. For some of them, we could just treat them like error and go on with our day. However, problems arise with slabs and stairs. <coughs> and trapdoors, and doors. So the first thing we want to do is find out where exactly the raycast is in the block. Using execute store and data get, we can store the raycast position in a scoreboard, which will be perfect. However, it gives the full position, so we store it as a multiple of 16, and then perform a modulus or remainder operation. So for example, if the block is at position 5.5, it stores the value 88, then takes the remainder of it being divided by 16. This results in knowing its position to the nearest 16th of a block, perfect for our use. So once we have that, all we do is validate its position and let it keep going, or stop if it is necessary. I try to use as few commands as possible by keeping all similar blocks in a tag, which can all be checked at once. Also, I tried a few other little tricks. For example, the top and bottom trapdoors, when opened, are the same hitbox, so I just ignored if it's top or bottom. I'm sure I missed a few other optimizations, but I'm pretty proud of how much I condensed it. Thankfully, offset casting was super easy, because I had already solved everything that was complex with armor stand casting. All I did was replace any time I killed or teleported the armor stand, and removed a couple of things. It only took one iteration to get where I was happy. Or so I thought. It turns out we can't use the exact same thing for the armor stand casting as you can for the offset casting. And that's because the armor stand casting takes the position of the armor stand and stores it into a scoreboard. The problem is with this method is that we can't convert that to offset casting. There's no way to store the position of the offset. If we try to store the position uh, of the player, that won't be very accurate for where the offset is. So we have to either look at a different method or choose not to implement it at all. And unfortunately, I can't come up with anything. Uh, I came up with one method, but it won't work very well or reliably. So I think offset casting has a pretty severe limitation of not being able to work with sub blocks. So stairs, slabs, trapdoors. Uh, it can work with uh, some of the 
passable blocks. So like the flowers, we just treat them like air. But we can't do that with all of the other blocks. Next, let's look at the performance of each of these methods. The best performance option would easily be snowcasting. It has no recursive functions and uses very lightweight commands and entities. I could never get it to move the server above 4 milliseconds, which is really good. Probably the worst performance was the armor stand casting, which is a shame because it can be customized the most. I get it to take the server up to 45 ms, which is very high. Of course, it was shooting the full 100 blocks, which means the raycast would loop 1600 times, which is the biggest problem with this method. Offset casting did pretty decent considering how much similar it was to armor stand casting. It wouldn't go above 15 milliseconds, three times more efficient than the armor stand casting. This option is the best if you want to balance between customization and optimization. So here are a few ideas I came up with that show the limitations of each system. First we have falloff, which can be used by all three methods, but it's the idea that the longer a projectile travels, the less damage it does. Or you could swap that around and make it deal more damage the further it goes. The next customization ability is a better damage system, and you can use all methods to implement this. Basically, it's replacing the Minecraft's damage system with your own better system. Automatic shots can only be performed by armor stand casting and offset casting. And it's the idea that you can shoot more than once if you press just once. The ability to turn off whether a projectile pierces or not can only be used by armor stand casting or offset casting because if a snowball hits an entity, then it stops. It can't go through. Next, let's look at instant homing, which means you shoot it and it automatically goes. So think of a projectile that automatically homes into where it needs to go. So I know it'll work for armor stand casting, but I'm not entirely sure if it, you could get it to work with offset casting. I think you could, it would just be a little bit more complicated. Let's consider custom hitboxes. So maybe if you have a block that's a different shape than maybe stairs, and you want to implement the hitbox for that, you could get it to work if you wanted to. I know you could get it to work with uh, armor stand casting. And finally, multiple bullets. Only armor stand casting can do this effectively. And this would be used for like shotgun type weapons. Offset casting, there's no real way to get it to work unless if you add armor stands, which defeats the purpose of offset casting. So to conclude, ray casting is useful and fun, but can be very complicated. You now know of three types of ray casting and know which ones are best for what. If you want to check out the data packs, I've got them all in the description. I put a ton of effort into this video, so I hope you like it. Thanks and have a great day.